Hello, everybody, and welcome back for some Bloodstained Curse of the Moon run by Laxus himself. Uh, so this run, we are doing some... Uh, well, actually, before I get into that, I'm going to rewind a little bit and thank uh, Mumu Akai a lot for his run. Unfortunately, we couldn't do a proper outro before because of the restream delay. Uh, but fantastic job. It was very, very interesting to see it. I never played through that one. I only played through the regular old Shovel Knight. Uh, so that one was really, really fun to see, basically, what we should have been called Spectre Hawk Pro Skater. Uh, it was a really fun run. Uh, so... On that note, we're going to restart our intro here and say we're going to see Bloodstained Curse of the Moon now by Laxus. Uh, we are doing Any Percent Nightmare Veteran. I definitely know what all of those things mean, uh, but maybe for the rest of the crew, Laxus can explain. So take it away, Laxus. All right. Hello, I'm Laxus. And uh, as Macro said, this is Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Um, basically a spiritual successor to Castlevania 3 on the NES. Uh, it came out three years ago um, as a Kickstarter side goal of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night and um, is the far superior game. And um, yeah, Malkros obviously knows what all the um, category things mean, but um, yeah, basically uh, Normal mode is what you would play the game the first time on. Then we have Nightmare and Ultimate uh, Nightmare uh, continues the story from normal mode and has some uh, very important differences. Uh, Ultimate is, feels very different because it um, because your main character Zengetsu has um, additional abilities and he can dash and double jump so the, the whole game feels a lot more fast-paced. But we're not doing that, we're doing Nightmare. Um, differences are... Um, bosses are a little bit harder, they have more health and slightly different um, attacks. There is a completely different final stage, which um, is one of my favorite stages, um, that you only see in Nightmare mode. But the biggest difference to Normal mode is um, that Normal mode you would start with Zangetsu, um, and then get more characters after each stage, up to four characters. In Nightmare mode you start the game with all these three characters, but you don't have Zengetsu, but you have the other three characters right from the start, and that um, leads to some uh, very different strats in the first stages. Also, I want to shout out Telio, since he finally managed to um, be awake for one of my runs. Good job, buddy. Um, all right. <laughs> uh, then we also have um, veteran as the difficulty, um, which is basically uh, like, like you know from the old Castlevania games. You have like knockback and stuff like that. Um, in casual mode, you don't have knockback. You get more weapon points for your sub weapons, and you take less damage. Um, but that's boring. So let's not do that. All right. Um, I'll try to count you down. And... Three, two, one, go! Alright, so, this is Miriam. She has a higher jump than the other characters and she has a whip attack, which has longer range. And she also has a very good sub-weapons. Oh, she can also... Um, she can also slide, but the slide is unfortunately a bit slower than just walking. Um, then we have Alfred. Alfred is uh, the old man, but he's just the best. That's all I have to say, really. Uh, he's just the best. He has really, really strong sub-weapons, but we will only see one of those. And we get it right here. The Ice Spell. Um, because it lets us take uh, shortcuts like that. This is totally intended, don't worry about it. And the last character is Gbel, which is basically Alucard, so he can turn into a bat. Uh, he doesn't have um, additional sub-weapons. Uh, so when you um, hit one of these purple lanterns, the purple lanterns always have uh, sub-weapons. Um, with Gbel, then you get uh, weapon points for your sub-weapons instead. Alright, on to the first boss of this very sh short stage. And... Um, yeah, I, d I don't know. This boss is also a bit boring. Like, 
doesn't really do anything, you know. Um, see, he's, he's just dead. He didn't do anything. So weird, right? Totally intended strat as well. Don't worry about it. Uh, just like this most important clip here. <laughs> after the stage. So yeah, after we've seen all the intended gameplay, um, I, I maybe should explain a little bit of that. So um, let's start with um, with all the shortcuts I take. So those zips are, you will see those through the whole run. Um, so for the most part you just freeze something with uh, Alfred's Ice Spell. Then you fly into it and transform back and you fall through the floor. It's that simple. And we can also um, freeze our sickles, that's one of the uh, sub references that Miriam has. Um, and use that to zip, so we can basically zip wherever we want. And just fall into the room below. Um, on some stuff it's very simple to do, um, but the smaller the frozen object you use is, um, the more precise it is usually. Uh, so this one here is a very precise one. In my opinion, the hardest zip. Okay, got it. No problem. And I also uh, grabbed uh, a weapon upgrade for my weapon points, so now I can have 30 total instead of 20. This is very useful. Also on this boss I will use the same glitch again to kill it, like in the last one. Basically, for some reason, like when you freeze stuff and um, then after a while it starts blinking to show that it's, um, it's about to unfreeze, I guess. Um, and for some reason, doing that blinking, uh, the sickle sub-weapon regains its hitbox every three frames, so every time it blinks. Uh, so you deal damage every three frames. In total, you deal damage um, 23 times over 3 seconds. And if you do that with two sickles, you just wreck bosses. Also, uh, 23 times damage with a sickle is 69. Just wanna point that out. Very important. Uh, something else that I would like to point out is that we just received a $30 donation, not from a judgmental iPhone, but from a critical Android, uh, saying, well, Laxus, if you're not going to play the NES Classic Trojan for charity, at least you're playing something that you're incredibly talented at. Thanks for using your skills for a great cause. I will forever be impressed by your talents and kindness. And this uh, money was put towards the Resident Evil Village, the full baby experience. Well, thanks, Android, for that. I appreciate that. He always wants to get me to uh, play Trojan, but uh, that game is awful, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, Alright, uh, we basically skipped the whole stage here again, and this is a very precise quick kill. Let's hope I get it. Yep, perfect. One cycle. There we go. Um, so I grabbed the the axe before the boss. Um, the axe is really really broken and super strong. Um, in zipless categories, you would uh, keep the axe basically for the whole run for every boss um, because it deals so much damage. It is insane. Um, for comparison. Um, so Miriam's normal whip attack deals 4 damage and um, the axe deals 25 for 6 weapon points. And then on top of that, uh, if you freeze a boss, the next hit will deal double damage. So that's uh, 50 damage right there. Oh nice, got that double slide. Um, for some reason you can slide there at the edge and then you don't fall into the pit, which is pretty nice. 
Um, but it's a very, very precise timing to do that second slide at the edge. But yeah, in um, in this category, I will actually not use the um, what am I doing? Uh, the X for a lot of fights, um, because in the next stage I will also uh, regrab the sickle for zipping purposes. Uh, also, we skipped half of the stage, uh, don't worry about it. That was the first zip that was found, uh, and it conveniently leads right into the boss room. So, we take that. This is the Hype Dragon. He's very excited. Um, but yeah, Ice Axe is uh, pretty strong. As you might, might tell by now. But he has a second phase. So I'm sure he will give us a bigger fight right now, right? I mean, he hit us twice even. So, he did something. <laughs> Alright, half of the game done. Um, But now the game actually gets quite a bit harder, um, casually as well as for this category, um, because, like I said, we will pick up the sickle again uh, in the two rooms away, I think. Um, and that makes things faster, but also a lot harder. Also, these guys only die if I hit them with all three projectiles of G-Bell's attack, so the timing is kind of tight on that, but there's our sickle again. Oh dear, I missed something there. So let's do it like this. I missed an input for a uh, dash, but that's okay. So I will do a zip in the next room, and this zip is different. So, like I said, he usually just fall through the floor in the room below, but I don't want that here. I want to go out of bounds to the side. So... I will prepare two sickles. Go out of bounds, land on the other one, and then just fly out of bounds to where we want to go. Because uh, for some reason, even though I run out of weapon points, as long as I'm out of bounds, I... Uh, stay in bad form so I can just fly over here and skip a mini boss um, which is actually a uh, portrait like you maybe have seen it in um, Rondo of Blood uh, there's two mini bosses of that kind in this game and we skip both of them so you won't see them yes this streamer is cheating that is Totally true. And, uh, cause, I mean, why not? Let's do another zip. And once again, we are right to the boss. And uh, because I have the sickle, I have to set up my sickles again. But on this boss, this is a lot harder because he moves around a lot. So, uh, has a very specific setup for this. He also has two different patterns, so I have to adjust to that. All right, that should be good. Okay, so I just wait here now. And he dies, perfect. Uh, that pattern is slightly slower. Um, like you want him to come down on the, on the right side, but no big deal. Oh, also every boss has a desperation attack like that after they are dead, but um, they don't kill you. If you um, avoid them completely, you get an extra life, but that's all that happens. You can't die from them. Exception is on this stage, because you can actually fall off the stage. Um, and then you would die and have to do the boss again. But I'm sure no one ever did that, right? Stage 6. Honestly... 
my opinion, one of the scariest stages. Not only because of the theme, <laughs> with the dungeon-like stuff, um, but take a lot of D-boosts here. Uh, that little zip at the beginning barely saves any time, uh, and it's the only zip in this stage. The reason I still have the sickle is for a zip at the beginning of uh, the next stage, and that saves just so much time that I'll have to uh, keep it for now. Well, also it helps a little bit in this room, save a little bit of time. Yes, you can freeze that lava, which is really cool. Sickle there, so we don't have to go to the right. Uh, this room here is actually super scary. It's it's a really, really hard room. No one believes me that until they actually try running this game themselves and they die here all the time. Because that's definitely what happened to me a lot. Uh, it, it looks like nothing, but <laughs> that room is scary. Trust me. Alright, um... Let's already talk about the boss, because the boss of this stage is uh, very random. So once again we have to do the good old sickle strat. Um, but the problem is this boss moves around at the top in a fixed pattern, but um, she spawns umbrellas that you have to get on to reach her and those are random so uh, let's hope for good spawns so we can optimally I, I would kill her on the left side that is the fastest but it's highly unlikely yeah not not happening with that pattern oh god nothing is happening with that pattern actually this is Well, let's improvise and see how that works. Uh, normally, if I don't get a super good pattern, I would put one uh, sickle on the left and one on the right. But I guess two on the right works as well. It's actually pretty decent for, for the pattern I got. Optimally, you want them to spawn in the middle so you can immediately go up and set up your sickles uh, on the left side. But hey, that's fine. Stage 7. So like I said, um, this is where we have the sickle actually for. <laughs> like killing the bosses with the, uh, with the ice axe would be faster, but zips are just too good. I mean, you always want to zip, right? This room is a big pain because these knights are very random. Well, I guess that works. Okay, here it is. Once again, a two sickle setup so we can go to the side. Also, um, Right in my way on that zip was uh, this armor. That is an upgrade that I take one less damage from everything. So that's that's kind of useful. Not really necessary, hopefully, but kind of useful. So now after we zipped, we can finally grab our axe again. Go to this intended shortcut for once. Important for, for this run overall is, is a lot um, your management with your weapon points. Like it's it's basically routed out perfectly. At least I hope it's perfect. <laughs> <coughs> and um, yeah, we get to the second to last boss now.
Um, that boss is very anime. Um, but also you will not see much of him, because... Well, we have uh, an ice spell and an axe, so... That's uh, all we get. If you would play this um, without zips, you would actually get one more um, weapon point upgrade, so you you would have 40 to total. Um, and then you would just have one more ice axe and you would not move at all. You would not see anything of the boss. So at least we get to see something, right? Alright, final stage. Um, like I said, one, one of my favorites, um, this one is exclusive to Nightmare Mode, so a lot of people don't know it because they only played normal mode. <coughs> um, has great music and like the whole game. But the gimmick of this stage is that it consists of three trials, one for each character. And I can't switch characters. So right now I'm uh, purely Miriam, but she has her axe, so everything is fine. Let's go for this D-boost. Okay. Uh, sometimes those stair stairs bug out and don't let you go down, and then you have to die and do this part again. But luckily, nothing happened. So every uh, little trial has like this mini boss at the end. Um, this one doesn't like axes. I don't know. Uh, now the best part of the game, because we play as Alfred, and like I said, Alfred is the best character. Just by definition. So we get to play purely with him. And this section is also the most interesting because we um, do a cycle skip here uh, by shooting this ice so we can jump onto this fireball. Alright, made it easy. And his mini boss is also pretty simple because, like everything that isn't a boss, um, just shatters when you freeze it. Uh, G belts. It's really boring. You just fly <laughs> over everything, and then you get to the next room, and uh, you fly over everything. So yeah, it's. <laughs> This trial is not, not very interesting. <clears throat> Oops, I missed. That's okay. Alright, and we get to the final boss. And uh, unlike Castlevania games, you go down stairs to the final boss. It's very original. Alright, and the final boss, um, I really like the final boss design, even though you will probably not see much of it. Uh, the final boss is actually Zangetsu. I never talked about the story, but uh, we are basically trying to save his soul, so... Uh, Dark Sengetsu is our final boss, and uh, we only have Miriam in this fight, and depending on the attack Sengetsu does, um, we get a little bit of help from one of the other two characters. Um, pretty random boss, because he has three different patterns, and only one of them is actually good. To one cycle which I didn't get, this is the medium pattern. Oh god, I should not die, maybe. This would have been the best pattern, but I didn't get it. Uh, so let's just... not die, maybe? Oh my god, he's still not dead. Must have missed an X. Alright, uh, time is coming up. That was a horrible fight, but uh, at least we got to see a bit, little bit more <laughs> of the fight. Uh, now we just have to protect Alfred at the end. And... time. Congratulations, another beautiful run as always. Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Um, Apart from the final boss that was like within 
15 seconds of my PB, so that's pretty good. Um, like overall, this this game has such a good design and such good boss design. You don't see much of the boss design in in the speedrun because they all die so quickly. Uh, but a lot of them are, are really really great. Um, one of the favorites of most people is probably a stage three boss, the the money guy. Um, it it's just really really good design. You, you don't see anything in the speedrun because they all die too fast because sub weapons are a little bit overpowered. Um, Manix is off one zero point five seconds off time. Oh my god! How dare you? You are fired, Manix. Sorry. Yeah, no, no more, no more uh, restreaming for you. Yeah, yeah, it's unacceptable. But yeah, this is uh, this is still my my favorite speed uh, speed run. I I love this game. Um, if if people like Castlevania games and haven't played this one, then shame on you. You really should. <laughs> it's it's a great game. Um, and yeah. Um, thanks uh, for having me for running this. Uh, appreciate it. Always enjoy running this and. Um, well, tomorrow I even have uh, another run, so if you for some reason want to see more of me, then uh, you can see another run tomorrow, which will be V V V V V V V V V V. Um, but yeah, um, let's have some more fun with the, the rest of the Castlevania block now. That's right. We've got a few more, a uh, few more Castlevania games coming up. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with Castlevania 4 next. Uh, but thanks, Lexus. Is there any shoutouts you want to do before we transition? Uh, shoutouts first to Carter for putting this together on his birthday weekend. Um, it's really great. Uh, al always great to see um, events like this. Um, I mean, they are fun and they are at the same time for, for a really good cause. So thanks for that. And obviously, all the people helping with it are restreamers, besides Mannix. I mean, he, he's out now. Uh, but thanks, everyone. And yeah. All right. Well, th again, thanks, everybody. We're going to take a little break and we'll be back soon with some Super Castlevania 4.